What's up, Serial Heads? Today I'm going to do something a little different. As I think you know by now, I have well over 300 boxes of cereal in my collection. There's no way I'll get around to doing videos for all of those boxes, and many of them don't warrant a full video. So I thought I'd just pick 10 random boxes to talk about briefly today. Cereal that I otherwise probably wouldn't get to here on Cereal Time. So, let's see what we got. First up, here's a box of Keeper's cereal. Kellogg's released this stuff around 1997, I think it was exclusively sold at Walmart. It was basically a Lucky Charms knockoff with fish marbits. It was released in conjunction with the FLW Tour, which according to the side of the box here stood for Forrest L. Wood, the founder of Ranger Boats, who's a sponsor of a bass fishing tournament. And on the back of the box here, they have these fishing stories as told by eight or nine year old kids. Now, I never bought this stuff, but maybe if I was a eight or nine year old kid around the late 90s when it came out, this stuff would have been my jam. Either way, it's a cool little collector's box. Next up, S.W. Graham cereal. This stuff came out in the late 80s, but it didn't last too long. They had both the regular flavor of S.W. Graham cereal and this brown sugar cinnamon flavor. It was basically shredded wheat, but with a graham cracker taste. They even had commercials for this stuff where the kids in the box argued about what the S.W. stood for. Spoiler alert, it was the first and middle initial of Sylvester Graham who invented Graham. I vaguely remember this cereal, but it definitely wasn't a mainstay in our household. This one, however, I definitely remember. Amazing Raisin Bran by Post. It came out in the late 80s. This cereal was awesome, and unlike regular Raisin Bran, this stuff had crunchy honey-flavored rings instead of flakes. It came in regular and cinnamon flavor. I love the cinnamon version. Also, I'm not really sure what these mascots on the front of the box are supposed to be. They're all really strange looking. That dude looks like a sunflower. One of them looks like a lemon. I have no idea. But I would have loved for them to stick around so we could have seen their personalities in commercials. Unfortunately, this stuff was short-lived and removed from shelves pretty quickly. Here's another raisin cereal, Apple Raisin Crisp. This stuff came out in the mid-80s, and I really love the homey feel of this embroidered box. This stuff was just crunchy flakes with apple pieces and raisins, but it was really, really good. I don't know why this stuff didn't stick around. I loved it. I also really love how they used How About Them Apples in the commercials for this cereal, and that was years before Matt Damon would resurrect and popularize that phrase in the American lexicon. New Apple Raisin Crisp cereal. How about them apples? How do you like them apples? <laughs> Speaking of apples, here's another apple-flavored cereal. This one was a variety of frosted mini-wheats that was short-lived in the mid-80s. This box is interesting to me because it doesn't even say apple big on the box. Sure, it says natural apple flavor there, but otherwise it just looks like a normal box of frosted mini-wheats. Now in the commercials for this stuff, they have a big new apple flavor banner plastered across the box. But for some reason that never made it onto this box. Also, you can see the size that Frosted Mini Wheats used to be here, not the puny ones that we have today. I think this stuff was discontinued before I started eating cereal, but that's a shame because it looks delicious. Here's a cereal I talked about briefly in another video, Pro Grain. This was the official cereal of the Iron Man Triathlon, which is a weird way to sponsor cereal, but okay. Here's a clip from the Pro Grain commercial. Iron Man Triathlete, Mark Allen, Kellogg's Pro Grain, Iron Man Food. Now this stuff didn't last too long, but it holds a special place in my heart because it was released only a few years after Kellogg's discontinued one of my favorite cereals of all time, C-3PO's. See, Pro Grain was essentially the same stuff, just rebranded. So it allowed me to live one of my favorite cereals all over again, just with the lame name and lame box. Hey, do you remember that 2003 movie, Looney Tunes Back in Action, with Brendan Fraser and Jenna Elfman? No? Yeah, I don't really remember it either. But it existed. Not sure why, but hey, I can't complain. Any opportunity to get more Looney Tunes in my life. But I do remember buying this Looney Tunes Back in Action cereal back in 2003. General Mills released it as a tie-in to the movie, and as you can see, it was basically tricks. Very lazy on their part. Although I imagine they figured, eh, nobody's gonna ever see this movie anyway. But still, I wish we could have gotten a real Looney Tunes cereal, not just the movie tie-in. But this is the closest we'll get, so that's why I like this box. Here's another box about animated characters, Jiminy Cricket's Wishing Stars. This is a rare box, it took me a couple years to get my hands on this one. This stuff came out back in the early 80s, and I never actually remember eating this cereal. It might have been off shelves before I was old enough to get it. But I love that Jiminy Cricket got his own cereal. They were crunchy, puffy, fruity star shapes which I imagine tasted just like Fruit Loops. You can see they had a really cool prize inside too, a stargazer, which according to the back of the box here, helped you find constellations up in the sky. They don't make them like they used to. 
Nabisco used to have its hands in the cereal game, and in 1972, they released Klondike Pete's Crunchy Nuggets. Pete here was a gold prospector, and he had a sidekick mule named Thorndike. Now this cereal has a long story past. It started back in 1939 as Ranger Joe's Wheat Honeys. Nabisco bought it and changed it to just Wheat Honeys, and then rebranded it again around 1971 when they called it Winnie the Pooh's Great Honey Crunchers. Finally, in 1972, that's when Klondike Pete took over, but only for three years until Nabisco pulled this stuff from the shelves. Pete reappeared on a UK cereal called Gold Nuggets back in 1999, but he never returned to US boxes. The cereal still exists as Honey Smacks or Golden Crisp. You've tried it before, but it's not the same without Klondike Pete on this cool pink box. Okay, for the last slot on the 10 random boxes, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do two boxes. But that's because they have the same theme. They're both Canadian cereal boxes. Star Wars Episode 2 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We have both of these brands in the US, but our versions were much different. Our version of Star Wars Episode 2 cereal is just boring puff pieces with marbits. This Canadian version had little clone trooper cookies or biscuits and fruity star shapes. This stuff was way cooler than our US version. And this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cereal was bright green turtle faces. They look like the smiley faces we've seen in dozens of cereals from Morning Funnies to Kaboom. And even though our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cereal was amazing, this stuff looks more like you'd expect the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cereal to look like. I bet it even turns your milk green. Okay, well, that'll do it. Hope you enjoyed getting a look at some of the more obscure boxes I have. I have plenty more that I can break out in the future. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay crunchy. Break out in the future. In the future. 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 Serial time. Serial time. Serial.